our tentative agenda for today, the first uh, one is the tokenomics V2 progress and results analysis. So as you all know, on uh, middle of January, Thales uh, voted in a massive change in tokenomics where uh, we started using Chainlink CCIP to synchronize all staking instances of the Thales token between base, Arbitrum and Optimism and all uh, fee accrual from all of those chains are grouped up into a single fee pool which is distributed to all stakers across all chains equally. And right off the bat, we bizarrely had a pretty stable fee income since then, meaning that uh, I think we are, are dead on 20% API ever since we launched on January, give or take, which is pretty remarkable for this early stage where we don't have like uh, some massive volume, let's say, we can do much more and with the further, you know, advancements planned uh, in the backlog of tailies, which are soon will come to light. These numbers like volume numbers should increase uh, by multiples, let's say tenfold this year. So this is a pretty amazing result in my eyes where tailies staking brings 20% API in stable coins which is amazing. And uh, yeah, so if you are staking on optimism, you claim SUSD uh, next to your Thales rewards. If you are staking on base, you claim uh, bridged USDC on base. And if you are staking on Arbitrum, you claim bridged USDC on Arbitrum. And uh, yeah, so that's my initial thinking. Like I'm kind of amazed how we uh, progressed so far with with the with this new tokenomics and I love the mechanism of uh, kind of we always forced people to claim or forfeit their rewards and with this fee accrual if you don't claim others will claim it for you so that's also amazing that uh, people are organically incentivized to be active staker participants and it's not uh, it's not a bug anymore. It's a feature, <laughs> you know. To to you know, if you are not active, you award by proxy other active Thales community members, which is amazing. And every week, I mean, Vlad can confirm. Uh, I think we have like 70, 80 percent of staking rewards claimed, right? Something along those lines, where the 20 percent get rolled over to the next next week's pool, right? That's kind of the average. Yes, we we have very active stakers, so they claim very active. So yeah, we not do, so much we... is uh, uh, switch to another round, but yes, there is some uh, amount that is uh, uh, carry on to the next round. Yeah, and uh, basically, uh, we did have some issues with daily so staking automation, where you can just set up a job on Chainlink automation to claim for you every week. They did some migrations to V2, I think, and that kind of broke some things on our side and it required some uh, ABI magic to, to, to kind of make the job work again. So even though we didn't have up to date docs on, on the automation, we still have like high retention rate of weekly claimers, which is amazing. So if you incentivize people enough, they will be active week after week. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's the intro for this topic. And maybe let's start from, I don't know, Cyberduck from the top and give some thoughts on this new tokenomics so far. What do you like about it? And overall feedback, what would you change Boy, in the yeah. future? And <laughs> like, what direction do you see us going, I guess? Yeah, maybe I'll... I'll follow up where you kind of ended on the automation side so i yeah i was playing around with the training automation uh i know you and i chatted i had some issues with it and that's probably all resolved uh, I, I do want to test it one more time again now that it's currently working especially to compare uh the 
the costs to execute a keeper uh, in comparison to gelato because last time last i remember uh, my gelato transactions were like one tenth cheaper than the chain transactions but i, I want to retest that again in any case the automation in regards to uh, the gamified staking bonus and the best details is not really optimal. People still need to vest tails and restake their tails to be maximum efficient in terms of their gamified staking bonus. And I believe that part cannot be automated currently. So maybe that's sort of like a food for thought if we want to improve that UX somehow, either to like add new functions as for like uh, vest on behalf and restake on behalf or compound on behalf, something like that. I know, I know, you know Big Penny was exploring uh, the idea of compounding, but ultimately, I think the vested fails should be compounded as well <laughs> and not left to be a manual action. So, that's something I think we need to look at. Uh, other than that, from a top and tokenomics perspective, I do like claiming the SUSD weekly. Uh, been circulating that back into Tails uh, on a few weeks, sometimes back into ETH, sometimes degening it on, on Spongely on overtime markets. Uh, so I do like that weekly uh, USD stimulus check. <laughs> it's enjoyable to spend it one way or another. Yeah, sounds amazing that, that you like it. And, and also, uh on on uh, automated vesting i believe we we are kind of reaching the point where i wouldn't go into much third party uh, guiding for for like automating those kind of stuff it probably we can do some on our end where where you can also be able to automate using chainlink or gelato the vesting stuff but then we are like really complicating it and uh, uh like opening up to to future uh frictions you know and stuff like that the same we did have with with daily staking using chain link so um i think that the best approach would be to kind of maybe consider changing the logic there uh in the, yeah, I, think the logic, I think the changing the logic would be the way to go i know like on synthetic side uh you can be forever in escrow and that escrow is forever come to the state so unless you hit that best button, you're basically staked, fully staked. And I think something like that we could do here as well, where once that, you know, for, for, what is it, four week period of vesting rewards, or maybe it's longer, I forgot. Once that period, you know, elapses, uh, expires, that those tails are still staked and counted towards, like, they are like best details, staked escrow tails should be always counted towards the staking bonus modifier as well. Not not only once you vest them and restake them. Basically to, to avoid having people hit those vest buttons and restake buttons. It's just two wasteful transactions that we could just avoid and have people just keep their escrow and have that stake forever. Yes, yeah. but that affects only that taking multiplier, not general staking amount, because all escrow amount is counted as staked. So yeah. yeah, so I mean, yeah, so just as it's counted as staked, it should be accounted forever for the multiplier as well. Yeah, uh, all in due time. And I, I don't think the effect, negative effect, is that substantial uh, that it requires some urgency, especially now that uh, you know the oh, vesting sure. amounts are constantly being lower and lower with the lo lower emissions. But something definitely to to keep an eye out for in the future to optimize the UX of staking, especially as we move forward to all the cool stuff that we will probably reveal today. other people with their thoughts yeah svenska maybe hey yeah so uh, yes same as uh, as you as both of you uh, i'm glad we went we went with this um these options to uh to redistribute uh, revenue uh, to stakeholders 
Um, honestly, I was not expecting the API to stay uh, that high uh, every week. So like 20% is instable, it's, uh, it's very nice. Um, as you said, we released this year, the, I think it was January 17th. So we still have two weeks left before our um, 10 weeks uh, vesting period is finished. So I think we should uh, see positive results like in two weeks maybe. Uh, with a um, lot of people uh, not uh, like uh, just on the and then uh, they are weekly uh, weekly tailies. So yeah, I'm really I'm really glad we went with uh, this community uh, choice. And that's it. Yeah, cool and. Uh... I, 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 I love the mo what I love the most about it is how we set the playing field for any future developments and like now we tie the whole protocol together with this single feature that everyone is uh, motivated equally for the growth of the entire protocol and that's kind of yeah. the goal here, right? Cool. And let me just see one thing. Uh, so, first three weeks, we had approximately $30,000 of fees per week for the first three weeks. And then there was a slow weeks with not much activity or sports games or whatever played. And the LP pools didn't have much kickback to the fee pool. So, the worst uh, we had was 20K, which is still amazing considering the low activity we had in that week. I remember we still managed to accrue 20 thousand uh, dollars and then like uh, the next week we have 27 then 18 then 26 and then 18.9 for the previous week and this week is projected to be above 23 24 thousand uh, dollars and the next week will bring also the march madness like the next couple weeks like the next month we'll have constant surge of uh, march madness volume which is really popular and 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 should be really good for for the uh, protocol and also uh, what is we still didn't touch upon is how cool is the 20 percent performance fee on the lp pools uh, like it it really kicks back a significant chunk in the in the fee distribution weekly and that's one of my one of the favorite parts of mine of the entire setup is where if LPs are having a positive week, daily stakers will also kind of feel it in their claims, so to say. And we saw the parlay, uh, parlay uh, AMM pools performing really well since we switched to this new architecture of that is kind of similar to what we are planning for the entire protocol for V2 for overtime in sports markets. So that's also something really kind of bullish to look after too, but we'll touch upon that topic soon. And is anyone from the council kind of have any constructive feedback or something that they would love to see uh, implemented in the future or, or change from the current setup in terms of percentages or parameters or anything? Maybe just, uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah loud and clear. Yeah, uh, maybe just from, from a, from a, like token price, I know we don't like to uh, talk about like token price here a lot, but uh, we were scared, and especially me, I'm, I'm being honest with you, I was scared about like we're seeing a big drop when we like shorten down inflation by, I think it was almost 60% in, in daily's rewards. And well, I just checked like eight weeks ago or nine weeks ago uh, when we started with the whole fee sharing, we're at 40 cents. We're at 40 cents still. Yeah, we had this all drop to something, and this was something which surprised me even more. So we have, like in average, we have 20% APY. We have 20% APY when we have been at 40 or 34 cents. We have 20% APY when you're 40 cents. So um, we're doing something right, or like we, we're getting the volume even with like a higher token price. And I think that's the thing which are people maybe a bit scared about it what happened if we were like at 60 70 cents we would be see 20 percent apy but uh we proved that never mind which 
rise that token will be or like tails will be we can reach this 20 percent, which is like a, a great thing and it surprised me to be honest that was not the biggest like promoter for like the fee share of all this maybe too early but uh pretty happy we, we implemented it and yeah 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 i think go ahead uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think, you know, if you just look at the chart and look at the volatility, I mean, I think that for those most mostly aligned with the project overall, the perfect scenario is the the, top, the price of the token stay fairly stable while you keep uh, staking and compounding and reaping those, uh, those rewards uh, and just basically having a, a, a passive, a constant passive income stream, right? And since we um, since we implemented this step, and even in uh, in the past few months, if you just look at the volatility, has significantly reduced. So that is uh, that is a good thing in my in my opinion. Uh, not seeing those big spikes, plus ten percent, minus ten percent within you know from one day to the next. Uh, I think within the next the last three or four months, we we stayed within a 10, 15 percent range which is amazing considering how volatile has the market been uh, in both sides, right? So I, I think that's a, that's a good, uh, that's a good result. Uh, and, and you can directly see on the chart the effect of, uh, of these, uh, of these tips that we have recently implemented. Yeah, I agree. And we live in this industry where, uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, the token is always the best uh, marketing tool as well. So people tend to uh, recognize the branding of your product the most uh, when your product's uh, token with the same name is everywhere you know, on all the, you know, mediums of, of you know, PR and stuff like that. So, so that's that's the world we live in, and and that's why the concerns about how the price or anything will affect the fees and reduction of those uh, those two those two uh, kind of stuff pull each other, you know, up like the, the token pulls new users, which increase volume and stuff like that. So, I never personally had any kind of concerns about this not being sustainable or scalable for whatever reasons so yeah let's see what happens and yeah that that's from this topic or if if anyone else has any comments here or or would like to see some changes or some new directions the team will take um i, I can maybe speak we will touch upon this on the end of the call on the last topic which is overtime v2 and the upcoming Bancoon update, which is like scheduled for tomorrow, right? Basically, we will see a much, much lower gas fees and call data kind of compression across all these L2 networks where we are present on. And this will help not only, you know, over time, uh, gas cost for regular users, but this will open the doors for us experimenting further with smart wallets, with account abstraction, and those uh, implementations, CRT4337, are really heavy on call data, which means that this update is perfect for us to increase the UX of smart wallet users or normie users, let's say, uh, that, that we want to use over time, for example, by using a Google login and depositing stable coins without worrying for ETH for gas, or like if you want to do like a $10 parlay, uh, you won't see like a $5 gas fee, which can happen on, on expensive gas fees right now in this pre uh, Dancun state. So this all will affect our volumes and our growth numbers really positively. And I love how we are prepared to welcome this change with the new tokenomics. And all pieces are in place. So let's see what happens. Um, and I know this is not on the agenda, but I kind of want to just do a segue, like a short uh, update that we are in uh, 
really close relationship with uh, Baikonomy, and we will kind of post then Kuhn push for a full AA implementation, not only for overtime, but also for speed markets. Uh, we want to create speed markets also into a super retail friendly application, you know, where people can just spin up speed markets uh, trading when waiting for a bus, for example, on their mobile phones with a few clicks, uh, Google login, and you know, those kind of use cases where I think the speed markets are perfect for this kind of fun day trading. And then uh, also uh, digital options. Uh, we'll also have like a V2 moment where we will kind of focus on the re-architecture of, of those markets. And they will also have like uh, their own growth story uh, but after the, the overtime stuff are done. So, yeah, just wanted to, to, to touch upon that. And the uh, base network is also kind of big on growing account abstraction and Coinbase smart wallet integrations. And we have a really close relationship with the base team. And we will explore some growth alleyways that are exclusive for base. And maybe in the future, there are some base exclusive products which will fully leverage that whole ecosystem of Coinbase smart wallet and easy base onboarding. So those are all the kind of method, like grow, growth alleyways for user acquisition that we are exploring right now. And yeah, hopefully those things move ahead and we have more to share soon. So yeah, that's on that. Uh, and I think we can move on to the next topic which is the tapering of Taylor's token LP incentives and an overall protocol on liquidity discussion. And basically, uh, we can kick it off with, uh, with kind of ga like gauging the current situation for uh, LP incentives and what we have planned for uh, the next stage. And it's a perfect timing because the LP contract needs to be renewed uh, by the end of the week, I believe. So it's a perfect time to consider a tip 197, uh, which Milky Way drafted, and it's called LP incentives tapering and moving PUL position. And basically, current reward structure is we are emitting 18.5 thousand tailies plus thousand OP tokens per week for tailies ETH LP providers on Uniswap using Arrakis on Optimism. We have some bribes on Velodrome, 5,500 tailies per week, bribes on Aerodrome, 5,000 tailies per week, and some Camelot incentives on Arbitrum, which are also 5,000 per week. And Milky Way suggested we further lower uh, the Arrakis incentives by 30% in dollar value uh, and lower Optimism Velodrome and Arbitrum Camera by 10%, leave base Aerodrome untouched because we are seeing like a really good growth of Aerodrome on base and we have like the best efficiency there due to the Aero melting phases basically. And we all know Aerodrome and Velodrome are reflexive of their respective token prices and they are kind of uh, doing great. The tokens are pumping, the API is increasing for everyone and more TVL is being drawn into Aerodrome and Velodrome. So basically this is this change is uh, proposed to run for eight weeks until further evaluation and the, we have a treasury held position in Tailies USDC on Aerodrome and Milky Way suggests we move it to Tailies ETH to capture more of Aero emissions and slowly move away from even pairing with USDC liquidity. So I'm in favor of this. I think we should taper incentives more and I think also that we should move away from USDC pairing and move protocol on liquidity from that USDC pair to the wrapped ETH pair on Aerodrome. So all is yes from me. And does anyone have any further comments or concerns about this? And maybe Milky Way can uh, expand more on it. Sure, just a small correct, um, just a small correction. Like the, I didn't propose a reduction on Aerodrome. It's more that's because of like the prices pumping. It's more about that we should a 200k well position to the e. Uh, pool as to not 
to, to like or like to getting bigger sell-offs of the LP stakers right now. But at least for now or for the for the next eight weeks, it's kind of tentative around 5k tail is that because we move LP. Yeah, I kind of broke up uh, for the last couple of sentences there. Uh, sorry, I can repeat, like, uh, just a uh, small correction, like, why I didn't reduce the uh, arrow position or didn't propose, like, because we're moving the PUL position there, this one, like, an open question, but I think that's a treasury question, is, like, um, if we're going to buy, like, E with the US, E, we're, like, having the PUL right now, or if you, like, um, like right now in uh, treasury but i guess that's a question for yeah and that's a good question uh, i'm kind of consideration that holding as much if is good thing right now for for yeah, every that. treasury out there so i would suggest kind of just swapping that usdc to if directly but let's see um let's see what the treasury dao uh, kind of decides on that end and but yeah uh, overall, it's a good decision to capture those error emissions, especially at these rates and errors to price, uh, which will, we were really lucky to be a part of from early on, and the Treasury kind of managed to accumulate a decent chunk of our uh, uh, aero tokens. So, yeah. So, does anyone from the Council have any uh, hard stance on this uh, TIP, or are we all in favor of kind of slowly uh, tapering such as Milky Way proposal? Uh, I have no hard stance on, in support of this tip. I uh, was just thinking, however, uh, Bellagrome and Aerodrome are launching the Slipstream upgrade with concentrated liquidity. I know they're doing it for some just limited pairs right now. But maybe it's something worth exploring, uh, setting up some concentrated liquidity on aerodrome and velodrome in the in the near future as well. I know that that, that has been helping with the uh, palm positions, but having that on velodrome would be nice as well. Yeah, on the on the palm positions, uh, they're kind of left to run on, on their own they are fully automated so yeah the, those kind of locations are kind of locked in there and we don't plan to kind of restructure those or, or or do any kind of you know movements but you know ve having some P more pl positions aerodrome also kind of makes sense and and it is being considered by the treasury and might might be even executed. Uh, I'm not up to date, but I think we might have executed this already. Cool. Yeah. Here, here's a DJ idea. I'm just joking. So, uh, tails base dodge pair. Oh. Do I sense some conflict of interest here? All in. All in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, be tied to the performance of base dog. Eh? I'm joking, of course, but if anybody wants to set that pair up, I'll vote for it. <laughs> here did here first, boys. So yeah, I guess this topic is kind of we are used to tapering, so we are all in favor. It's not a drastic change, and uh, it's basically kind of the road we agreed to take where we will slowly but surely taper all LP incentives to not have any unnecessary cost of maintaining LP positions now that the POL positions are really healthy and luckily for us Aerodrome and Velodrome are both pumping and their token price action is giving us a really comfortable TVL positions on both of those. So yeah, uh, we should probably vote this in uh vote this tip in really soon and allow the protocol DAO to execute on uh, the continuation for the new rates uh, yeah i am uh, i am strongly in support of this it just makes completely sense from a capital efficiency perspective and again it just to give some peace of mind to to those that may have like uh conflicting uh 
kind of opinions on this, even though they, they may not be speaking up right now, but it, it's really, it, I mean, this is for eight weeks, right? So I, I think that part of the the success that, uh, that this protocol has had historically is the ability to react to market conditions, the the ability to 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 you know shift gears as needed. Uh, we can run this for eight weeks, reap those benefits right now, and then reassess like we've always done. Um, so I, I think it's not a, a one all be all decision. Uh, it's uh, it's again a, a capital efficiency decision that uh, that makes completely sense in the current market conditions. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And the, the 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 current healthy situation of the treasury after the really difficult bear market, kinda is the showcase of how we successfully managed to navigate the the, the waters of treasury management successfully. You know, and especially when it comes to also the Thales token, which also survived, didn't have any major liquidity crunch during the bear market. We managed to supported with various grant grants from OP and Arbitrum and uh, partnership with Arrakis and Velodrome and Aerodrome. So we managed to kind of stay afloat during dark times of the crypto markets. And now we are kind of in this really safe space that we can taper these incentives. So pretty happy with those results so far and let's continue tapering, I guess. Cool. I guess no more on this topic, right? Pretty straightforward stuff. And we can maybe continue on to a really cool tip 195, which is the auto compounding uh, staking claims and like building an architecture for that. Um, wait, who wrote this tip again? Let me see. Was it the infamous Big Penny? Yes, so Big Penny has an idea that we should allow stakers at the click of a button to claim and then automatically convert their stablecoin rewards into more Thales rewards. Um, wait, is Big Penny here? Does Big Penny want to take the stage and talk to us a bit? Let's see. Hi. Hello, Mr. Hello, Big Penny. Ah, oh, hi, Mr. Pets, uh, Pat Stack. Oh, and Pat Mr. Sheevers, Pat Stack, <laughs> Pat Stank. Oh, yeah, you know Mr. how I am with the name. <laughs> I can't, can't barely uh, speak my own name. Um, yeah, the, the idea is very simple. Uh, basically, uh, it stems from the community and uh, saying that there is obviously an appetite for for compounding rewards. So people, what I totally love is that people say, uh, fuck uh, stable coins, I want tailors. And uh, basically the idea is, is to, to um, cater to those people uh, that say, I want, uh, or also to the to the buyback people, the people who uh, like the buy, buyback uh, system to give them uh, a chance to just roll their stable coins right back into into uh, tailors and restake it with with like a simple auto uh, an automatic uh, and a, a, with a simple single transaction that can be automated basically and i know that for, for example cyberduck would be someone who would uh, utilize this in an instant would make his uh, uh, day way easier and uh, yeah so it's a really simple, simple idea to for people to accumulate more tailies and uh, reduce gas costs and automate the process. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice TIP, I must say. And and also, I was kind of thinking about as we are slowly moving towards this uh, account abstraction future where we'll probably see everything done by smart contract wallets and, you know, these uh, new types of logins. Uh, maybe uh, this kind of new UX button is a start of kind of allowing people to have a future where they will also, from their comfort, comfort, 
comfort of mobile phones or like non non crypto native people will be able to explore daily staking for example with like uh short uh ux kind of simple how do i say steps where they can onboard with stable coins they can also choose to maybe compound some stuff into daily staking to be exposed to the fees or they can even lp or you know have like a full-blown web 2 experience but with all the web 3 stuff that are not exclusively just trading sports but they can also maybe be exposed to the entire protocol and stuff and this tip by you sounds kind of like a step into that direction where we start letting people do these automated transactions with simple clicks of a button so yeah, I, I, I love that. I, I love, uh, love that you're always uh, thinking ahead of things because uh, right now, as you said correctly, this is not part of, of the uh, TAP I proposed, but it's, it's correct. It, as soon as we have the technology to kind of uh, zap, uh, uh, zap stable coins into tailors and stack it, yeah, that's like the easiest on-ramp for, uh, for everyone to just say, hey, you have some stable coins don't yeah. buy it on a dex just just uh, uh click this button and you buy and stake automatically so yeah that's that's a great idea yeah maybe we start zapping everything left to right after this tip who knows all in due time though so that's why i'm kind of supportive of this tip and i know yeah. cyberdeck is as well right oh for sure i'll be clicking it <laughs> my favorite button Nice. And anyone else from the council? Any comments on tip 195? I'm with you guys on this one too. I, I love the idea, and uh, yeah, in general, the, the easiest you, the easier you make it for the users, the most likely are to use a, a feature. So this is to me is a is a no-brainer. Yeah, and compounding, to be honest, that, that's a term that uh, not, not for normies, but for uh, uh, for natives, at least for me, is the co compounding is a, is a principle that, that I learned very early um, when I started with, with DeFi and crypto. And it, I think that's, that's something uh, we have when we pay out stable coins, it, it's uh, good when the money doesn't go away, when it stays in the system. And I think that's a good way to capture those stable coins. Right. Maybe, maybe we can zap into, into LPs. Maybe that's the second button to say, okay, take the stable coins and uh, uh, put it into one of our LPs, uh, be, be the, be the, be the, uh, the house and uh, something like that. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can even uh, like convert to those uh, those stablecoin rewards into vouchers for uh, overtime. But yeah, that's yeah. that's for the for the devs to decide because they have to build it. But yeah, when Pat says that that's just a building block that can be expanded on, all the better. Yeah, definitely. Like vouchers get vouchers involved get like rewards for certain behaviors uh, like you know uh, connections to account abstraction where mobile wallet users can also participate into daily staking easily with the click of a few buttons which zap in or out like those kind of stuff is kind of what we are opening the doors to here and yeah mm -hmm. i'm all for exploring those Cool. 195. Bullish stuff, I must say. Thank you, Big Penny. Yeah. Maybe, but then, do you know if uh, TIP uh, 195 is already uh, started the implementation or not at all? No, yeah. I mean, not at all because that you don't, you don't, you don't even want to know the back end backlog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I know. Laden is kind of smiling right now, probably thinking about it. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 insane, but everything is going like a really well pace. So, if this tip is voted in, it it will not uh, be stuck into uh, you know backlog hell 
like not for sure, but it will take some time to kind of focus on it and explore what the best way to implement it. Okay. So yeah, we still didn't uh, touch upon uh, preemptive reparations in any way. So yeah, that's 195. And on that segue, maybe like, I don't know what Vladan thinks, like, should I just maybe introduce the Thales uh, protocol, new pages first, and then we can talk about maybe over time V2 into more in-depth talk. Let's first talk about V2 <laughs> and uh, okay. for the finals, uh, let's <laughs> leave Thales I out. Sounds good. Let's hear Vladan, which he will talk about the status of uh, sports markets slash overtime V2 which is planned for this year, early this year, let's say. Yes, no timelines, but yes. <laughs> uh, so for some intro about general idea about uh, V2, uh, the initial architecture for overtime was uh, taken from uh, Thales AMM. Uh, uh, I can say that was really good architecture from technical side, uh, everything is on chain, everything is visible on chain. We have those uh, minting options for each position. You get uh, tokens uh, in, uh, in your wallet. So from that side, everything was really good. And I think uh, we uh, made a really good job about that. But uh, during the time uh, we uh, get in some troubles, uh, uh, how to uh, first scale uh, uh, everything, how to introduce new sports, uh, new market types. And uh, uh, second problem was uh, uh, gas cost. Uh, first for the users, because uh, creating parlays uh, when uh, we have this uh, bull time is uh, really expensive and uh, on the second uh, note, uh, uh, treasury expenses are uh, really high. Uh, you do not want to know how much we spent the, these days on uh, bots for updating odds, resolving and creating markets. So the idea was first to uh, create architecture that uh, will work uh, better with scalability and the second uh, to reduce costs on both sides, uh, on user side and uh, on uh, treasury side or PDAO side. Uh, so the main problem here was that we put everything on chain. So every uh, odd update, uh, we update uh, odds uh, on contract side. Uh, so uh, that was the per first step uh, in um, new architecture to move some of those things uh, offline, let's say like that. So uh, everything related to the markets now will be uh, in some separate file, uh, not stored on the chain, but we will use uh, 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 Merkle tree for um, verification of those data. So everything still will be verified on chain and on chain. And uh, also we decided to store results still on uh, chain and on uh, uh, that way we reduce costs costs for for updating goods because we will update some file somewhere that we still not this, uh, decided where to store those files, but uh, uh, that won't be on uh, chain anymore. And uh, <clears throat> the second thing, uh, it uh, will be much easier to uh, add new market uh, types. So again, no contract up update, everything will be stored on in files. Uh, and uh, to, to um, uh, make a job easier for us and for some third, third party that uh, uh, implement uh, our architecture, uh, we will introduce API, something similar that we have right now with uh, API that is used by, uh, for example, different Telegram bots. Uh, so that uh, will be the middle layer between uh, those files where we store markets and odds and uh, uh, someone who want to, wants to integrate uh, our architecture. Uh, uh, also, uh, we decided to, to 
uh, to slow down things regarding this because uh, uh, it's really important to have really uh, good architecture now that will support, uh, for example, uh, market type on uh, soccer, like uh, half-time, full-time, or different goals or different combinations that uh, have been asked to, to add. But <clears throat> right now, we do not have that capacity to add. Uh, and we had a few iterations regarding this architecture. Right now, the status is that I think we covered really that basic stuff regarding MM. Uh, how to buy uh, 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 tickets and uh, positions. And uh, uh, the second thing uh, that is, let's say, finished is uh, how to store results on chain. Uh, the, the main stuff, uh, main, main uh, topics that we need to cover uh, are balancing because right now, because right now we have that on chain now we have to take some another approach and uh, the second thing that we are thinking about is um, regarding liquidity pool uh, we have a uh, multi multi collateral supported but it's not ideal because uh, for example some DPEX and uh, uh, different stuff so one idea is also to uh, support uh, liquidity pool in uh, different collaterals but we will see uh, and uh, also right uh, we won't have a uh, separation between uh, singles and uh, parlays. Uh, we will have uh, one liquidity pool, one AMM. Par uh, singles will be uh, parlays with one game. So that is something uh, 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 that we want to introduce. And uh, new architecture uh, will be much simpler, but uh, still very. Uh, all security will be there because we will have a verification uh, with uh, Merkle trees and uh, uh, those scalability that we get with this new architecture, I think it's really good. And one thing regarding um, this uh, update that we have tomorrow, uh, the approach we, that we take uh, is that uh, we, we will have huge call data and this update should reduce uh, that part of uh, gas costs. So I think we took a good approach with this. Yeah, like by using Merkle trees, we really significantly increase the, the call data of, of all the architecture, but then comes down Kuhn, compressing the call data cost. So it's perfect timing. Yes. So yeah. So this will allow for vertical and horizontal scaling and you all saw how Parlay LP performed recently since we migrated to a new contract which works similar, similarly to the pool that is planned for V2. And we are hoping that we will stick on that same performance when the singles migrates together with the Parlay into a singular pool. And with this means that we will have a single large TVL pool. It will not have segregated liquidity. So uh, LPRs would not have to worry about which single or parlay are, is performing better this week, next week, do I migrate or not migrate. This will all be kind of uh, compact into a single pool per network at first. So that's that's pretty amazing as this. So yeah, um, we thank you Vladan for that update. And we are kind of looking forward to, 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 to see it in action. And also something to note is this means the end of the balancing architecture, right? As Vladan said, we will not see any more skew impact or price impact on large trades, but every, everything will have strictly fixed odds, right? Yes, something like that, because <laughs> skew is something that is, let's say, confusing for regular users or, uh, on overtime. So pro probably we need some rebalancing that will be included in the odds. So you don't see anything uh, when you are buying positions. You will get odds and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And basically, like, you, what you see is what you get. And yes. we are all used to that. So this also has an impact on UX, future norm users and everything. So everything is falling into place. Cool. 
maybe um, to ask a question, Vladan. Like, what's the reason why we did not implement that for the start? Like, like was it the learning outcome of the of the last year, or like was it just like what's the exact reason why we go now with this kind of implementation a big step for? Uh, we, uh, we already had uh, architecture that was really good <laughs> at that point with uh, Teris and everything. Uh, we didn't know at that point of time which problems we can occur du during the time. So that is some lessons learned during this period. All right. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, basically, uh, basically uh, we had uh, digital options. AMM, which was revolutionary, and then we figured out, oh my God, this is perfect for sports as well. Then we deployed overtime using digital options AMM, and then we kind of scaled a lot using it, but this means increased go costs, and kind of we were limited in how uh, how far we can scale, uh, like to what, how wide we can scale with offerings, and then we hit some limits there and stuff like that. So. That's why we kind of like, I, I think Daniel and Vladan and the rest of the backend crew kind of figured out that this is like a much better for, approach for sports and using this cool new tech called Merkle trees, which is similar to ZK proofs, which is like what Vitalik is a big fan of. And we might see like the Ethereum network pushing on that end as the next big hard forks. We are kind of on track to, to, to be a part of that movement as well. So. But yeah, Daniel is here. Maybe he can uh, step in to clarify some more stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, I just don't know which question to start with first. Um, I, I think you already answered some of the questions. So if Milky is asking why we didn't foresee that we need such an architecture before, I mean, like a lot of um, like dimensions to that answer. Obviously, we did not know Denkun will be a thing, and we did not know that coal data. Like historically, gas prices on L twos were mostly because of uh, rolling, you know, just doing roll ups on an L on L one, which and the gas that goes into the L one roll up was like the the size of the coal data basically. Um, so the architecture had to kind of have less and less of coal data, and now with Denkun, it's the opposite. Uh, L2 gas will be the thing you factor in, where, whereas the call data will be blob, will be cheap as fuck, man, man, French. So, and that's what we are adapting for. So, like, it couldn't really be, you know, something we could foresee on doing, doing advanced. But I think we are one of the first teams out there who are actually redoing their architecture to accommodate blobs and then could upgrade. Um, and yeah, just getting ready to really expand the number of markets to introduce live betting and everything else we have been asked to do historically, like even futures. Uh, one aspect of V2 will be having multiple native collaterals. So there will be multi multiple pools. There will be an ETH pool on stable coin pool. And there will also eventually be a pool that does like yield earning tokens like LSDs or whatever. And those are the perfect market fit to have futures because you're locking your collateral into a bet like one year for now. And you get the odds, but you also get all the yield that's accruing in that year. So that was just a general, I guess, uh, just you know, sharing some thoughts. But yeah, any specific questions? I see Pure is asking about how risks will be managed, I guess, on V2. Uh, it will be managed the same as in V1, so there will be for each sport and each bet type on that sport, there, there will be a contract variable that dictates liquidity and we will measure the risk on every position and, you know, just make, ensure that the maximum loss on any given market does not extend the amount in that, in that variable, be that like $5,000 or $10,000 or whatever. And we, we still haven't figured out how we exactly want to do the rebalancing, but yeah, that's that one aspect of it. So like making one one side of the market cheaper and the other one more expensive so that it's auto rebalanced. I see Pure is typing a follow up to question. There will be a skew, but not slippage on bet. Well, I mean, some details are still TBD, but yeah, right now 
we don't intend to have any any skew any slippage sorry so like the odds you see are the odds you get but we might do something like up until a certain threshold like one thousand dollars the odds are fixed but if you really want to do more than one thousand then it might be like a dynamic kind of, of thing Yeah, and, I, and after hearing about all of this, I suspect also that it wouldn't be too hard for integrators to accommodate to this and even beneficial because you really have better, much better performance and much clearer picture of how things work, right? Yeah, I, I, like integrators, I think, integrators, I think are, are going to be the least of, of kind of complexity here. So the API will be all, all ready for them. There will be clear instructions, instructions and obviously they will need to do some work, but like, I don't anticipate more than like one week of work, to be honest, for every integrator. So it's just take the API and prepare the data for user to bet. So it's the same thing you're doing now. You, you will just need to pass more call data because we are relying on Merkle trees and you have to pass the Merkle proofs. But again, that will all be very cheap with the Denkun upgrade. Cool. And maybe to clarify a cross-chain question, every network will have the same architecture without any like significant changes between base, arbitrum, and optimism, right? It's compatible uh, for all networks equally. Yeah, right? I mean, for us, it's going to be much simpler to add new chains. That's the whole point, because the Merkle tree will be reused for every chain. So we will always have identical odds on every single chain due to Merkle trees. Uh, but we might have different exposure on different chains if we are doing rebalancing. Some of those things are still kind of being worked out and we might do like like we used to do an MVP version and then figure out some more details about risk manage management and rebalancing. And obviously we want to do live betting with the release and that, that will be additional work maybe for the integrators because it's just something new, but I think that's a different conversation. Bullish stuff, guys. Bullish stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not giving estimates when build will happen. It's just it's moving along every day, and uh, we do need to see Denkun live and and just validate all the assumptions. But from what I have seen with that tool that gives you an estimate in gas costs, I think we really hit the nail on the head with the new, with the new architecture. <laughs> I don't know, okay, I like this is one time where I one occasion when I really want don't want to give any estimates. I think the point here is to really just nail the product in every given sense. So yeah, and, and we have a working product right now, which will become much yeah. cheaper just implicitly with Denkun. So it's not like you know, there's nothing and there will be something. It, there is something that's pretty good, but it will be like ten times better soon. How soon? I don't know. We'll just keep working and. And we want to really, you know, anticipate everything we we might need so that we have an architecture that's that's good to go for like you know decades to come. Yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, basically uh, we have like a product that is working and that is being used, and we are in no rush to kind of drop this new architecture because of it. So, yeah. I got a question, guys. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of users have been asking about this too. Um, what is the current uh, what are the current plans for uh, implementing live betting? <clears throat> so the tip for live betting was written a while ago. The architecture for that is still kind of what was written in that in that tip. I think it's one for free. I'm not one hundred percent sure. It's it's there in the channel somewhere. Let me yeah. see if I can quickly find the tip. One for free. Yeah, that's the one. So the architecture remains the same. It's just uh, just putting it down in, in code and just testing it. And um, there's a lot of risk management that goes into live betting that we still haven't fully worked out. So it might be an MVP release where we do only basketball and maybe we only do until fourth quarter to kind of reduce the leverage that comes from every point where we might have a delay. So. 
the work on that will start soon. There is a very, I'm sure I had to drop for a second. I had another meeting. I'm sure the guys have maybe shared some words on the upcoming Tailist IO release. Uh, and if not, then I'm very sorry for spoiling, spilling the beans. Uh, so that's <laughs> happening first, and then we will have resources to, to move to fully to V2 uh, and put people on, you know, effectively working on live betting. stuff so yeah we'll keep you guys updated as things progress for sure so no timelines we all heard what the type of architecture will it be and it will allow us to scale massively in, in verticals and and in width so good stuff um next up if you guys don't have any overtime v2 uh, comments, I would like to tie up on that and maybe share some visuals for the upcoming Tailis protocol new pages. And I can share a screen from within the stage, right? Okay, I hope I don't leak too much. I'm actually not sure you can do that. I think I can. <laughs> Give it a go. You guys see this? Yeah. Yes. yes. Cool. So the narrative here is Tailis. Sorry? Refresh so they can see the numbers loading. That's like the biggest. No, but if I refresh, <laughs> a web page will pop up above ah. and everyone will be able to use the build, which we don't want. Why not? Who cares? <laughs> so Tailis protocol. We are kind of wanting to, to focus on uh, having like a clear branding of the Tailis protocol, which means that Tailis IO page will be focused on the token operations, the LPing operations, the governance. Uh, so everything from staking to claiming to the governance processes, following stakers, uh, learning about the protocol, also integrating like all the docs for integration everything will be within tailis.io that is the core of the tailis brand and uh, above that brand there is overtime application there is tailis markets application there will be a segregated speed markets application spongely bookiebot and hopefully tens and hundreds of other front ends which will integrate the tailis protocol so that's the general idea and we will have a much clearer picture where people might be confused these days when first learning about Tailis, what is Tailis, is it digital options, is it binary options, is it sports, what is overtime. We want to avoid those kind of stuff with this clear distinction and this slick new domain, which will be Tailis.io. And as you can see, uh, this will be the landing page where we will see some basic statistics, we will have some copies and we will have a carousel of all the integrating like notably uh integrated dubs which will we will kind of fill up on our own discretion considering which are presentable and which are not previously there were some integrators that didn't kind of survive for a month or two and those are kind of not worth worth to uh implement here so uh the you you can see the ecosystem apps carousel here so over time, Telis market, speed market, bookie bot, spongely, and this will hopefully go to infinity with all the uh, applications we will have integrated, and they will be kind of sorted by the adoption numbers and growth numbers. We have all the infrastructure partners and backers and tailored for developers. This is like an important part of Telis where we want to be used as a white label solution for uh, anyone who wants to integrate our liquidity and contracts for digital options, for sports markets or speed markets. Everyone can use our APIs to create their own product and all volume through that product will go towards our contracts and our stakers and our liquidity pools. And that's kind of the, the idea here. And we have some visualization of these tokenized trading. Uh, this will be updated in time if we ever fully pivot towards uh, full uh, non-tokenized positions using Merkle trees. 
but as you can see we are kind of on this landing page trying to uh, get people to know about the project more and have more clarity on the branding and this is the governance part and the timeline and roadmap which, which, where you can browse and go slightly into the future to see all the all the like uh, you know future developments and then i will go ahead and go towards the dashboard page maybe let me share my screen again smart 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 <laughs> This is the dashboard page where you can find some metrics and some stuff all in one page. You can see the total protocol volume, total fees gathered to date, all the volume for all various AMMs, unique user count, TVL of different products. Daily stock and staking is like central where you can see the API. You can see all the fees per week updated no, automatically good. from the contracts. You can see the percentage of circulating supply staked. What are the estimations of API for protocol rewards, for tailist rewards, total number of stakers, token info, the pie chart, integrators volume, the latest TIP. And this is like the tailist protocol dashboard, basically. And then we can move ahead for the take token staking and you know we had some feedbacks from people where daily staking is kind of really complicated to 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 digest from first contact and with this uh, new domain we will have it all really simplified you, this is the staking page where you have staking data your stake share your apis your staking balance what, what is stake directly, what is escrow balance, and this is the stake, unstake, uh, uh, you know, the input field where you stake or unstake, and this drop down will explain how daily staking works to the details. So this, when you click on this, it will expand on the text, and only then you will be kind of, your screen will be filled with walls of text explaining how daily staking works. And most importantly, the, the page where we kind of put the most uh, simplification in is the rewards page, basically. As you can see, the rewards page, you have like, you, you are quoted here how much you have to claim. You claim uh, below, you can follow core staking rewards. So they are now called core staking rewards and gamify staking rewards and only when you expand these uh, pages, you can see the details. How do you gather gamified staking and how does it all work? So it's really simplified. We have a dedicated Westing page, leaderboard for gamified staking and account preferences for, for the, you know, usual stuff of migration, merging and stuff like that, that people are using for, for better staking UX. And then, uh, what's the coolest thing is that we will have the LP pages all within Thales IO. So now we are kind of unifying all AMM LP pools into a single domain, AMM LP. And here you can choose between Thales AMM, Sports AMM and Parlay AMM. This will be unified, of course, with the new architecture. And this is like a really a uh, much more clearer view of the LPs, LP pools, and, and it's kind of more optimal for everyday DeFi participants, basically. So uh, this will go live uh, soon with uh, new documentation in place for the Thales protocol, some clearer picture about the branding. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, this will separate the Thales protocol and backend token operations and the DAO from the trading interfaces, which are Thales markets, overtime markets, soon speed markets also separate. And that's the general idea. And this is mostly like PR. Everything is saying there are no contract contract changes with this. It's mostly just uh, evolving, you know, to a full fledged protocol. And yeah, do you guys have any comments on this that you saw today? Looks great. Definitely a lot more streamlined. Love it. 
Yeah, and there will be more clarity around the token itself in connection to Thales and where does the digital options and sports markets, where does it all tie to? And this will basically be the protocol dashboard slash headquarters. And, you know, you can navigate as if you are a developer, you can easily navigate to documentation of how to integrate from this domain. You know, the docs will be really much more streamlined and all of the rest will be left on Thales Markets docs, for example, the trading guide for digital options. Yeah. Over time, docs will have trading guides for and onboarding for sport markets. Yeah. Everything yeah. else, yeah. Thales.io. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> Glad you guys like it. And... Yeah, you trade on, so TLDR, you, you trade as a user on Thales markets, on overtime markets, speed markets, but uh, you stake, claim, LP, everything from Thales IO. But there will still be like uh, AMM LP pages within overtime DAP and within Thales markets that there will be some overlap of same features, but you know, you can find everything protocol related to Thales IO. And I suspect this will be a major for placing us as like the leading prediction market tech stack in the world. Like we are on the road to becoming a global liquidity hub of sports markets and digital options where, you know, as we, as we have, as we see scaling of the whole blockchain world, we are looking to capture the monopoly of uh, prediction markets and these type of all or nothing markets such as sports markets and stuff like that where people or entities around the world can use Thales protocol for their needs of risk management, liquidity, exposure to sports games, exposure to sports oracles, everything. We are looking to dominate that space and Thales.io uh, will be, you know, the main backend for that global domination. Let's say so. We are not only aiming to be a retail friendly application for sports games in sense of overtime and whatnot. Uh, we will be a liquidity smart contract hub for sports markets and for the exposure for, you know, AMM LP pools where, you know, people can take the other side of the exposure using our smart contracts. And yeah. That's basically uh, end of my TED talk. Where did you learn this? Let's go. <laughs> Is there any, I know that we briefly touched upon it in the previous uh, governance call. Is there any plan for uh, changes in uh, in the vaults with B2? I think we didn't actually touch upon vaults yet. Um, so, but yeah, Dan and maybe Vladan can confirm yeah. those are still under consideration. Exactly. I mean, I'm not sure there will be vaults in V2. I don't think it's, I don't think we as a protocol get much from the vaults per se. And I'm not sure there will be, um, so right now we have those like bonuses or discounts for rebalancing. I'm not sure we will have those in V2. It's kind of really complicating a lot of things and i'm not really sure we are getting that much out of it i feel we'll get more if we kind of focus on adding more more markets and you know live markets and whatever then yeah then the vaults or or whatever so right now to, to simplify the answer yeah right now i'm not sure there will be vaults in v2 it's obviously yeah. something yeah, that's up for discussing I'm just yeah not, just not sure there's much value in those yeah, that's what I was getting at because the 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 deposited amount is is minimal, so clearly not much people are actually using those. Yeah. So in the in the in the you know perspective of uh, of streamlining the architecture and the application and the user experience, probably though that's one thing that uh, that might be expendable. But yeah, we'll talk about more more about it. Yeah, may, maybe down the line, but uh, initially, if, especially if we are doing like multi-collateral pools, I don't right. really know how vaults you know, factor in there. Yeah. 
Kaj rekli? Buliš golf kol. While everyone is too busy chasing Solana meme coins, we are out here building the future. So on that end, I think we finished the every topic that we had. It's quite extensive, almost nearing the one hour and a half mark. And with that, I think we can slowly end the golf call, right? Any final comments or questions from the community or the council about everything revealed? I guess not. Just want to thank the team for the for the hard work. I mean, we're seeing the results, the growth of the protocol, the growth in users, the growth in volume. Uh, you guys are doing an amazing job, so that's uh, that's great. So thank you. And thank you guys. Thank the council and the community. And also, don't sleep on March Madness. Details will be revealed soon. We're having like a really cool on-chain competition where March Madness involves brackets and massive ARB rewards on Arbitrum Network. And yeah, every fan of NCAA will really enjoy this competition. I can vouch for that. So keep your eyes open for any announcements by the end of day, hopefully. So let's see what happens. The tournament starts officially on Sunday, late at night, European time. So uh, let's see what happens. Um, yeah, I want to thank everyone for joining in. Thank the community, thank the council. Thanks, Daniel, for chipping in all the important details on the V2, other questions. And yeah, let's stay in touch and keep an eye out on announcements, I guess. Unmute music. Bye bye, guys, and thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye bye.